Okay, your time starts now. Brilliant. So we're going to be pitching to you our product side. So to start off with, this is Candice and Raj. They met as lots of couples do these days on Tinder. They've been chatting for a while. They decided to go for drinks. Day went well. And they ended up sleeping together. A few days later, Raj decides to get a sexual health screen just to be safe and finds out that he's positive for chlamydia. He gets the pills, gets it treated, and so typically what will happen is he'll be encouraged either to directly contact any partners he's had to tell them, or he'll be offered to um, talk to the gum clinic and they can call up or text any of the partners. But this relies a lot on trust, on him being like, transparent about it, having the correct phone numbers or having phone number contact details, which isn't the case all the time, and especially with all the stigma around it. So Candice didn't know, and a few weeks later, she noticed an abnormal discharge for her. She went to get tested, and you probably don't guess, she is familiar. In this time, she's gone on a couple of other dates, and now there are a couple of other people who are at risk of being infected. And this has a knock-on effect. So we present Sty. Sty is an app which allows us to do contact tracing for STIs. And the way it works is that our users could register with the app. Our users can register with the app. They'll be given a unique patient ID. Okay. They'll be given a unique patient ID, and then when they go to get tested, they can connect their patient ID with their uh, existing testing service. Then, when you go on a date or when you're meeting with someone, you can register a connection. You don't have the personal details about the other people. It's just a registered connection between two non-identical patient IDs. In this case, as soon as Raj tested positive, Candice would have got notification, she could have got her test, um, and then that could have stopped that knock-on effect, and she would have got her pills um, to treat her. And so alongside the contact tracing, with all of this, what we're doing is we'll be having data about the prevalence of certain diseases in different areas, and also about the way in which it's spread and the sort of time course. So there's a lot of analytics we can do on that in terms of predicting hotspots, modeling um, which areas where um, various public health measures can be implemented. Absolutely, and the way we model these, uh, these diseases in epidemiology is through a class of models called compartmental models, um, and this describes uh, an individual who would be placed in a certain compartment uh, that describes their state. So, uh, a classic model is the serial model uh, that divides the population into susceptible, exposed, infected, and recovered. And actually, we can now describe how an individual would move through these uh, states, these compartments, uh, as uh, they are uh, in the course of that infection. Um, our chlamydia model expands uh, this simple model into a, a bunch of a bunch of uh, different states that describe uh, the, the particular disease uh, very well. So, for example. Um, in chlamydia, you can be infected but asymptomatic, and you can kind of understand how, in this sort of state, the, the kind of the red state, um, you would actually just be passing uh, passing this disease on uh, without you knowing that you have the disease. Um, and the other thing is, even after you've recovered, you could lose that sort of long-term immunity, uh, get reinfected, uh, and then not know that you're reinfected. Um, this is also a very common kind of thing. And so, so we we, we want to model this. Um, you know, we can kind of assign variables to it. Then we can describe the transitions between these variables, um, and we've got a you know bunch of fun and fresh and fresh equations, and then we can model how the dynamics um, would would kind of play out in the population, um, and this can allow us to see kind of how an app like this, a contact tracing app, would decrease uh, the kind of incidence of chlamydia uh, over time, and, and we can see kind of through kind of different rates of the app adoption how that would change. Um, so th this code is up on GitHub. You know, we, we kind of raced to finish this. Uh, we were about like two hours from getting some charts out. Um, but, but, but I mean, the, the idea is like there'd be an exponential drop and it would settle at a steady state. Um, we, we could almost make it uh, a kind of disease that would be kind of on the fringes of society and people wouldn't even think about it. Um, uh, so, so contact tracing kind of, kind of it's, it's quite exponential kind of how, how, how kind of, uh, that, that drop off would be. Um, and I've got two charts, one from GovWK and the other from MIT Attackery. So the chart on the left, shows the incidence of STIs. So the, the one you should be looking for is the, the dashed blue line. Chlamydia, uh, you can see it increased from 2012 to 2020. Uh, the the, the uh, social uh, isolation really kind of, kind of, kind of you know, you know, put, put back. 
uh, in space, but, but you can see that that trend would increase. Um, and the, the next slide uh, shows uh, how, how COVID, um, at the rate of a COVID tracing algorithm, uh, There's a couple of other features that we are interested in trying out to try and get users to buy in because ultimately this works if users use it, right? So one thing is with dating apps. So we would consider some sort of integration not to show necessarily the results of all your SCI tests because that's not something we would want to do, but to see if someone's regularly testing or like when they last tested, uh, some sort of verification where we can show that we confirm they have tested. So if you're putting that on your profile, it's not self-reported. And also, even if it's just we use the app, so then you know you can use any of the other features. That's sort of one of the ways. Can, can I ask what you managed to build this weekend? Yeah, sure. So I mean, um, I mean, so part of it's on the UX side, like we were using Figma and mocking up what the sort of app might, what, uh, how it might work. And then the other half is on the modeling side. Yes, on the modeling. Right. So we uh, use an existing model for um, STI uh, distribution. And uh, we do have a working piece of code uh, for Being that. Uh, right. Uh, the the problem is that we didn't have time to actually run it uh, for like a, a certain number of days. We also used uh, synthetic personal data based on understanding society and 2011 census to um, uh, instead instead of your whole population, you just select people who are more likely to uh, uh, have a regular uh, sex with different partners that, uh, well, th those people are from single person households and they have uh, completely different demographics. Okay, thank yes. you. Carrie? So, so more faith about the plot of the So I mean, the fact, uh, so I mean, my experience is from London, Sexual Health London, which is the same sort of thing. And by having it online, like people are used to the web-based portal where you order your tests and being able to integrate between the two will hopefully make it much easier. Um, we, we've said one sexual health clinic, I think maybe I should say service, because um, from my understanding, it's all based on the region which service is offered. What we're trying to emphasize here is we're not saying we're going to completely revolutionise the way sexual health testing is done across the whole of the UK. It's going to be tested in a small area, scaled, like, you know, improved, scaled up, and then we, our aim is national deployment. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from judges? No? Brian, very quick question. Oh, how do you register the connection while keeping anonymity between partners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can go for a decentralized approach, or you can have a trusted, uh, centralized uh, entity that can keep all data. So, uh, so, so, for example, Sexual Health London is part of the NHS, but that, that data is kept separate from the other patient records. I think this is how something like this should work. It should sure. be owned, but separate uh, within the government. Uh, yeah. Great. Question? Actually, can we both play the possibility of long term if uh, sites? Uh, Successful to be linked with uh, Tinder. So actually, you can go and select the Twitter pick the blue. So how do you incorporate third parties without leaking your data to uh, an entity which will sell it for advertising? Okay. Um, having the verified tip means that you're on the app, right? But but if you say that you're clean or not, Tinder would mind that to give you advertising, and we definitely don't want. So we have to be very careful uh, about how we work. Mm -hmm. I said grind is as well. But grind is self-reported. <laughs> That's self the thing. Really so like we that. want to try and offer some sort of way of saying, I was last tested for HIV on a certain day. OK, but did I just put up in a random day? Or, you know. Yeah. A lot can change in 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, it might be another fair question. But so, so, um, so you mentioned the sexual health data is kept separate. Do you think that that's for legal reasons?
reasons. So there's very clear legislative framework that says we have to keep sexual health. And so I, I guess it's one of the debates we're having at the moment is whether that needs to be changed to truly integrate sexual health into the rest of healthcare. And I wondered yes. whether you'd had any thinking about that and had any particular assumptions. Yeah, so I mean, I can talk from, so I mean, I've just been working in Dean Street in Chelsea Westminster for the last month. And something that's interesting is the amount of patients that don't want their GP to see their records. Um, I think a lot of things that people share in sexual health services, it's not every, it's not the things that their GP services should know. So I'm not sure if, I understand how it's amazing to have one NHS number and have all of your information everywhere at once, but I can also see why it's important that patients have are empowered to have the choice to have their data kept separate about their sex life and their broken knee and their enough to you know what I mean? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Brilliant.